I'll just hop on? Yeah. Perfect. The day before we departed San Francisco was a fine day for sailing. So I tagged along with Heather Richard to pick her brain about living aboard while running a charter business. To some, the idea of living in a tiny space, while opening your home daily to the public, and managing to make a sustainable living from a passion for sailing sounds just mind-boggling. I had to learn more about how she was undertaking this task. I'm Heather Richard. I am a charter boat captain. I used to coach sailing and now most of the time I take people out on private charters on my own boat. Is that how you pronounce it? Caradon. Caradon, okay. It's a made up word so you can say it any way you want. <laughs> Which came first, the boat, the charter? I worked for other charter boats for a long time. Uh, I learned what other companies do. And we also live on the boat, family of five, three kids. They're 13, 11, and two. And my husband's here part time. So I, we, it had to work as, I had to find a boat that would work as a living board and as a charter boat, which was a little difficult. So it took um, about a year and a half of looking for the right boat. We finally found her up in Seattle. And there's still some things that I wish were a little different about the boat, but in, in all, I'm glad that I spent so much time working for other companies and running other boats, different kinds of boats. Um, some of them were big, like I, I sailed a 70-foot schooner that carried 50 passengers. Oh, wow. A lot of people to look after and yeah. a lot of safety concerns with that many people. And on top of that, we did wine tasting, so they were mostly <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then I also ran, um, you know, small six, what they call a six pack charter. It's a Coast Guard uninspected vessel can carry six passengers or less. And okay. Usually you don't take crew, it's just the captain does everything. And so I ran a couple of those for other companies as well and kind of figured out what works and what doesn't in that realm and decided that that's what I wanted to do just small groups and. Uh, Unexpected vessel um, means a little bit lower cost because yeah. uh, you obviously have to keep your vessel safe. But if the Coast Guard's not requiring you to carry, you know, all of the equipment that they require on a big boat with 50 passengers, then you have a little bit more leeway to, for example, like live aboard and have your own personal gear around. Everyone's always in awe. It changes all day long. It's different every day. We have a ton of wildlife. We've got porpoises and seals and sea lions and tons of birds and uh, salmon and crab and just, you know, lots, yeah. of, lots of good wildlife to see. I guess that kind of answers the question, like, why, why here? Like, why San Francisco Bay? Well, Did we you kind of settle to... bridges. We have a protected waterway. It's not like you're out on the open ocean in huge swells where people are immediately getting seasick. Um, yeah. So if, if I see somebody turning slightly green, I can just go in away from the ocean where it's going to be calm and flat and yeah. they're fine. Um, and if people are out for like a big adventure and they want to go under the Golden Gate Bridge and go out on the ocean, then that's what we do. Um, so if there's choices here and there's all these, like in every direction you look, there's a beautiful scene to take in. So yeah, that's why right here. <laughs> the first thing is to just spend as much time on the water as you can. Get your sea time. Um, put your hours in, put your days in at sea. The license that I hold required um, 720 days at sea, which is quite a lot of time if you think about it. Yeah. Um, just to qualify to take the exams. So once you put that in, then you you, know, you pretty much have seen all the things that can go wrong out here. You've seen, you've dealt with all kinds of weather conditions. You've um, hopefully gotten to know your own waters. Yeah, it's true. I used to bring people out on my first boats that I had, and <laughs> it was just like, I'd scare them so bad because I didn't know what I was doing. I was just yeah. learning. Yeah. And I didn't see, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't like mortal danger or anything. But like, yeah, it's all about making other people feel comfortable because, like you say, everything's different every day. There's so many different things happening. It's easy to deal with them on your own time. 
it's kind of difficult to deal with make yeah. other people feel comfortable. Yeah, you don't want to learn on this job, necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You kind of need to learn the sailing and have that really down, um, and then learn the charter business. Yeah. yeah. And the charter business is just like any other service industry business, or like, you know, you work in a restaurant, you try to feed people, make sure that they get what they want, enjoy their time, um, don't keep people waiting, you know, tell them what to expect, and then deliver what you tell them. Yeah. You know? yeah. So that's kind of the the real basics of the charter industry is pretty simple that way. Um, but knowing how to sail and making people feel very comfortable and safe, even if things are like hectic and chaotic and flapping around, like you really need to just stay focused on the task at hand and make sure everybody warn people what's gonna happen next or you know, just make sure everybody feels like there's no Yeah, no danger. No danger no also, if you enjoy what you're doing, if you're having fun with it, they're going to automatically have fun with it. Yeah. If you're stressed about it, you're worried, they're, they're not going to have so much fun. I see a lot of charter boats in the area. They just seem to have been here for years and years, forever, and that's why they have business. Um, did yeah. you go about, like, how did you go about advertising yourself and um, kind of starting it? I... I transitioned into it the first year by, I was still working for other companies. Okay, yeah. Um, so, what I would do is I would, I had I had my, my website up, I was on Yelp, I was on TripAdvisor, on Google, um, I had a blog, I started Instagramming, I started doing all the social media stuff, Facebook, all of that. Um, and I started getting people like friends, family, people that had sailed with me on other charter boats um, to follow. And so that helped like bump me up in the search engines a little bit. And then when I first started, I was shameless in asking people to write reviews at the very beginning. <laughs> so um, I pretty much begged people to write a review if they you know, felt like it. But I also um, reached out to a couple of different companies that would you know, just have a huge readership, like Groupon and Living Social, and then I'm now doing this thing with Airbnb. Yeah. Um, they just have a huge volume of traffic through their websites, and people are looking for something to do, and if mine pops up on there and it looks interesting, then that's exposure I wouldn't have gotten otherwise. So yeah. it's, instead of paying for advertising, all I've done, I haven't paid a penny for advertising, so yeah. I pay for my website to not have ads on it. Yeah. That's you have everybody living on board, all your kids. How does it work out on a daily basis, you know, when you go on a charter? One thing that's a challenge, um, the kids are used to being out and about and like going, they'd rather be at the playground anyway than sitting at home usually, so um, that's not a big deal. For them, if the boat's out, then they, they easily find stuff to do. And the, and the, if the boat's out, the weather's good, so it's not like I'm out here when it's pouring rain and they're yeah. you know, like stuck trying to find stuff to do. Yeah. In rain. That doesn't ever happen. Um, it's more that you know it's a nice day, boats out sailing, they're on a bike ride with friends or with a babysitter and or with dad, and they go to the library, they go see shows, they go to the aquarium, to the exploratorium, to the yeah. science museum. They get out and do stuff, which I think is better. I'm really impressed by I can't even keep my husband's stuff under control <laughs> and you've got three kids and you managed to keep it all ship shape they're really learning well to yeah, stow things properly time, but yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean I still run around the boat and throw things behind <laughs> cushions and 
tensions sometimes right before a charter, but for the most part, they're pretty good. Plus, they don't have a lot of stuff either. You know, like they haven't accumulated. Yeah, they're on a boat. They're on a boat. You know. Yeah. Um, they they have their skateboards and their bikes off the boat, and they go play football, and they you know they do things. And yeah. Supposed to have things. So the Galilee Co-op Community Association. It's it's a really great place for this kind of setup for you too. Yeah. You know, there's somewhere for them to be and be playing. It's it's just like a good community. Like yeah, there's a big garden, bathrooms up on shore, um, a big field to play in, and then all of these other kids that live there. And that's always interesting to the people too. Like it's always a big conversation starter when they come down this funky dock with all these hippie houseboats and yeah. you know, everything's <laughs> painted, crazy colors, and you know very. Very northern California. Um, it's always that's that's always part of the charter too. Yeah, <laughs> food is important to people, and it warms their hearts, and it's memorable, and smells, and tastes are memorable. And so I I have found that to be one of the most important parts of providing a good sailing experience. Yeah, just making sure that people have like something nice and cold and refreshing to drink. Yeah. And I have ginger ale. Everything's okay. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm grateful to Heather for taking time out of her super busy schedule and for letting me see how her charter is run. It was also an appropriate way to make one last round of the bay and to say goodbye to all those sights and sounds of San Francisco. Mm -hmm.